This is the fifth thermal physics lecture. In this lecture we're going to be finishing off looking at ideal gases. We'll be considering adiabatic processes and then we'll be going over a few definitions. Actually we're going to look at textbook sections 19.9 and 19.2. We're also going to have a quick look at how combustion engines work. This is not accessible. So first of all, just a quick recap of the ideas from the last lecture. We saw that for a gas, dW was equal to minus PdV. This is the differential form of the work equation. We can integrate it and we see that work is negative the area under the curve on the PV graph. As a gas expands, the gas is doing the work, so the work is negative. The gas is losing that energy. When the gas contracts, we need to do work on it, and so a, a contraction has a positive work. We saw that heat added to a system to get from a state with VI, PI and TI, so those are the initial volume, pressure and temperature, to a state with final volume, pressure and temperature, VF, PF and TF changes depending on the path we take. So there's not a fixed amount of heat involved in getting from one state to another. It depends on how we get between the states. We saw that there's molar specific heats for gases and that molar specific heat is the energy that needs to be added to raise the temperature of one mole of gas, one Kelvin. And these are given for constant volume and constant pressure processes. We also derived the expression that the molar specific heat at constant volume was equal to F over 2 R, where F is the number of degrees of freedom. And the molar specific heat at constant pressure is related to the molar specific heat at constant volume through Cp minus Cv is equal to R. These formulas are given to you on the formula sheet. Okay, on to new material. Adiabatic pr processes. An adiabatic process is, is one in which no energy enters or leaves the system as heat. So Q is equal to zero. So in reality, the way that we can do this is we can have a really well insulated container so that heat cannot pass easily through the walls, such as a thermos. The other way to do it is to perform a process quickly. It takes time for heat to flow from a hot body to a cold body. So if we perform a process very quickly, there is no time for the heat to flow. So for adiabatic processes, by definition, Q is equal to zero. So our first law of thermodynamics tells us that the change in the internal energy is equal to the work done on the system. So this is just an interesting example to consider, adiabatic free expansion. Imagine that we could concentrate all the molecules inside a piston into the lower half of the piston. We'll put a very thin membrane between them and then we very gently without applying any force or doing any work break that membrane. In this case what is going to happen to the temperature? 